Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make my ultimate, ultimate gluten-free chocolate fudge cake. This is a little slice of heaven, you guys, for all of you chocoholics out there or just somebody who really wants, uh, has a chocolate craving. <laughs> this will satisfy those cravings. So let's get started. So this is my go-to chocolate cake. I've used it for so many things. I've made it at least 100 times. And it starts very simply with all of the wet ingredients being poured into my mixer bowl. And that includes sugar, canola oil or any neutral oil, milk and eggs, as well as some vanilla. And my vanilla seeds got stuck down there, so I'm just kind of washing it <laughs> to get those vanilla seeds out but first before we get that on the mixer I'm going to sift through my dry ingredients and that consists of my gluten-free uh, all-purpose blend as, as well as unsweetened cocoa baking powder and baking soda and I'm just sifting these onto a sheet of wax paper to make it easier later to add them so now I am combining my liquid ingredients in my um, mixer bowl. And when I first started making this, I realized that I picked the wrong beater blade. I have a couple of different attachments for my KitchenAid, and this one scrapes the sides and it really doesn't work well for this liquid of ingredients. I just added salt here, by the way. So now I'm gonna add about a third of the dry ingredients and kind of pulse it on and off, especially because I'm using the wrong beater blade and all of my uh, cocoa is flying everywhere. <laughs> I think if you use the right beater blade, you don't really have to pulse it on and off. And I kind of realized that halfway through this and switched to one that doesn't scrape the sides. These ones that scrape the sides are great for things like a thick, like cookie dough or a thicker batter. There, that is much better. So now I'll add the second dose of the um, dry ingredients and get that in there and mixed. This chocolate cake, I'm telling you, I never used to like chocolate cake when I was younger growing up and this one kind of converted me and it's gluten free at that. So once we put all of the um, dry ingredients in, we add in a boiling liquid. In this case, I'm using boiling coffee. You can use boiling water. That's actually the original recipe used boiling water just do it very slowly. I like the coffee. I like the way coffee brings out more of a chocolate flavor. Um, and once you put all the coffee or the water in there, bump it up to like medium low and let it go for like 30 seconds or so. It is a very loose, thin batter which is perfectly normal. So we get this into three eight inch cake pans that have been lined with parchment and bake it at 350 for about 30 to 35 minutes or so or until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. So now we'll make the fudge frosting and this consists of powdered sugar, unsweetened cocoa, butter, and boiling water. <laughs> There's that boiling liquid again. And the reason we use boiling water is because it tends to melt some of that powdered sugar and creates more of a fudgy frosting as opposed to like a fluffy frosting. So now we'll add a little bit of melted semi-sweet chocolate. Now this looks like a very small amount and that's because it is and it's because my um, battery died when I was recording it making the first full batch. So I decided to make another batch and I just uh, cut it in half just to make a small batch just to show you how it's supposed to be made. And this won't go to waste. I can always put it in my freezer for another application. But after you make this, set if it's a little loose, if it's warm in your kitchen, 
set it in the fridge and kind of um, whisk through it every like 30 minutes or so and it will tighten up and firm up. So now the cakes are out of the oven. We've cooled them in the pans for about 10 minutes and now I'm taking them out and I'm gonna cool them completely. You can also freeze them so that you have a better texture for um, frosting your cake, which by the way, this looks very liquidy and it's only because it was like 90 degrees in my kitchen that day um, I had the oven going just about all day and I could not get this to set up the way it normally does. And that is because it was just so hot. If you have that same hot problem, you may have to keep putting this back in your fridge. Um, but normally I don't have that problem when it comes to this fudge frosting. So now I'm just, um, stacking the cakes like you would do any layer cake. I am not a professional cake decorator, so I am not, I'm gonna kind of speed this up and go through it because that is not my forte. Um, I have decorated cakes in the past, but it is not, there are people that are so, so much more talented than I am all over the internet. If you want to follow their channels or whatever, I have a few that I can think of off the top of my head, but basically I'm just doing it for the sake of making a really great tasting cake. So now we're going to make the chocolate ganache that we pour over the top. And this consists of hot, heavy cream that's poured over um, chocolate and this is real chocolate this is not chocolate chips it's Calibo chocolate um, are they Calais or Calets C-A-L-L-E-T-S somebody if you know how to pronounce that let me know in the comments below <laughs> along with some corn syrup and we'll let that um, melt the chocolate and I have my cake my cold cake sitting on a can so it can be elevated and catch any drips and then I have my uh, real chocolate sprinkles and I'll leave a link for that below. I got those on Amazon So now we're just carefully and slowly Whisking the ganache and I say slowly because if you whisk too fast For one thing you could break the ganache and then you'd basically have to start all over And also you don't want to incorporate a whole lot of air into the ganache Isn't ganache just a lovely lovely thing I mean who doesn't love ganache it is just so satisfying to see like a bowl of ganache and it's even more satisfying to see it poured over a cake and down the sides just like this so I'm going slow I let my ganache um, cool down significantly before I'm pouring it on the cake or what it'll do is just slide off and all of it'll take all that frosting with it so I'm taking my offset spatula and kind of pushing it over the sides and I'm turning my um, sheet pan as I do it carefully of course because it is resting on a can my my entire cake is resting on a can but it's a nice big can so I think it can handle it and then I'm adding more of the ganache to fill in the spots that didn't get full as you can see um, it's dripping down onto my like silpat or silicone baking mat and then what I can do is just um, scrape it up off of there later when it cools down and kind of hardens I can use it for truffles I can just put it in the freezer and use it for another cake another time I would never like throw the rest of this away you could just eat it with a spoon or put it over ice cream <laughs> so now I'm going to smooth the sides just very gently and again I am not the world's best cake decorator so my sides are far far from perfect but I was going with this cake more for um, taste 
than a perfect, perfect look. Plus, the sides are going to get covered with all kinds of chocolate sprinkles. And speaking of, I'm going to let this sit up until the ganache is just tacky. So if you touch it with your fingertip, it, it will just be just tacky so it can still hang on to these sprinkles. And these sprinkles I have in a bowl and I'm just taking um, a handful of them and pressing them along the sides of the cake. And the bowl is set over a baking sheet with sides so it can catch all those extra sprinkles and you can put them right back in the bag. And they are kind of a, an expensive ingredient, but I've used them um, for so many applications. I've used them for cupcakes and whatnot, and they are just so much better than the fake chocolate stuff. <laughs> And they give this wonderful crunch to the side of the cake. You get like all kinds of elements in this cake. So once that's done, I go ahead and put it back in the fridge to let it really set up. And then I'm going to decorate it abstractly <laughs> with um, these chocolate decorations I made in an attempt to kind of just make a really fun abstract cake. And to do these, I spread some tempered chocolate all over my counter at first, and then I could also spread it on the side on the back side of a baking sheet. But I'm taking an offset spatula and kind of scraping it up while it's still kind of wet and getting these like fans, I don't know what you call them, shards, whatever. And also um, for the stuff that's a little more firm, I'm making like these cigarettes, I guess you'd call them chocolate rolls or chocolate cigarettes. And I'm just getting all kinds of different like shapes and sizes and I'll just put them abstractly all over the top of the cake. That's another like fan. And you kind of press them in, sink them into the cake and just put them willy-nilly where, wherever you want to put them. And that's it. Just a nice ultimate chocolate fudge cake that happens to be gluten-free with this chocolate overload decorations and real chocolate sprinkles. It may look like wow, but let me say when you taste it, that's when you'll really say wow. This cake is just divine you guys it's a moist chocolate cake the chocolate fudge filling is divine and then we have the ganache that's smooth and silky and then we have the sprinkles on the side which add a little bit of a crunch it is perfect you guys heaven on a plate make it you will absolutely love this enjoy